Time for space chat now with cosmologist and astrophysicist Brad Tucker from the ANU who for uh, 20 minutes a week is our expert as well as theirs of course. Yeah. We're going to talk about space in a moment but you were tweeting some pictures uh, amidst yep. the flare up of the fire obviously that's um, been threatening in the south of Can um, Canberra. You're yep. in Canberra. Yep. So, uh, so, so yeah, we're, we're further, a bit further north than the, uh, you know, the southern but suburbs. These are from your property. That's right. So th we, we back onto the reserve, and so we're looking straight towards the valley, towards Mount Tennant, and this is what, you know, we were seeing. Uh, and so, you know, I think this is why everyone was quite surprised, I guess, a couple of days ago when the mm. fire really started to flare up. These were the visions that we saw. Um, you know, it's just taken from my iPhone, so not really en enhanced in any way. Broadcast quality now. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but it, it's the sort of thing where it, I, I think we've had great communication by the emergency services, right. you know. So you uh, door knock today. So, so yeah, they've been door knocking in our area, making sure we're prepared. We've checked in with our neighbors. You know, we're in quite a, an older neighborhood to make sure they're prepared as well. You right. know, we've prepared our places. We're not worried about the fire front. Um, you know, it's, it was a lot of what happened in 2003, which was ember attacks uh, and And that's easy because your property backs onto a reserve. That's right. So that's kind of, I walk back to the reserve yeah. and that's what we're really seeing here. You, you, uh, you get worried about ember attacks or whether that... Um, and, and that blows through. Yeah. That's right. So, you know, I would not, you know, try and fight the fire front myself. You know, it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, you know, but you could prepare your house. And I view it as a, a mathematics. Um, I know that's kind of weird, but the more you stack the odds in your favor, the better you'll come out. So trying to do the small things that reduce that load and that risk. Clear gutters, full of water. That's right. You know, we put a system on the lawn. Nearby. Yeah, we put wheelie bin, you know, we poured water in the wheelie bins, uh, cleared the leaves off the trees. Those simple things on our roof that just make sure that the odds are in our favor uh, if the unfortunate happens. Just like many, I guess, preparing yes. uh, wildfires, you guys call them. That wildfire. So, you know, growing up in California, I remember a lot of fires Great around experience. it. So it's, uh, it's definitely right. something you remember. Well, all the best for you Thanks. and your neighbors over the weekend. Let's talk space, though. Um, yep. This is a humble brag from you, I think, because you've managed to get one of your former PhD students in the news today. Yes. He's uh, using this Kepler Space Telescope. He spotted a vampire star. Star. So, yeah, so this is the project that he did as part of his PhD. Uh, and so what we, we discovered was a, a vampire star. So we have a white dwarf. So this is something our sun will be in five billion years. Uh, and it got too close to a brown dwarf. So we kind of seen some animations here where a brown dwarf is really just a, a tiny star. And if the white dwarf here gets close to another star, it can actually suck off the atmosphere That's of it. crazy, isn't it? Uh, so it's kind of like just hooking up a giant vacuum cleaner and pulling off the surface. But that would be hot too, wouldn't it? That's it's right. So it heats up to 17,000 degrees Celsius, and then it explodes. Uh, and in this case, we call it a vampire star because it actually sucks the life out of the brown dwarf. It so that... that sun there, what does that turn into at the end of this process? So eventually it blows up and now that gas cloud will go out and eventually cool down to form new stars. So it tells us a lot about how new stars are forming. But this system is very similar to our own in the future. You know, Jupiter is almost a brown dwarf, so we call Jupiter a failed star, and that's what brown dwarfs are. Oh, it's a failed star. It? it kind of is, but it's, it's good for us. Um, but, you know, it, it, it didn't meet its marks. Um, and we always wonder what's going to happen when the sun eventually interacts with Jupiter, and this yeah. actually might be what it is. So, this sounds very naive. If there are two stars in one system, do they sort of battle it out until one's the bigger one? What? It, it kind of depends, and it actually, it's quite interesting. It depends on where the gas kind of clumps to form it, and they try and swallow up as much as they can. And it, first in, best dress. The first one to form gets more of the, the gas first and, and becomes bigger. the bigger one. But bigger is not always better. The bigger one burns faster and actually dies quicker. So in this case, the brown dwarf will live longer, but will be sucked alive by the other one. Sounds charming. Uh, <laughs> there's a big new telescope in Hawaii. This is, this is getting out into normal news today. <laughs> these yeah, are new yeah. images of the sun. It's being described as Honeycomb. I think we've got a bit of a, a time lapse. Yeah, so this is from a, a four-meter telescope built in Hawaii. Now, what we're seeing here is these features are on the scale of, you know, they're saying about Texas. We can see down so to the... this is unaltered. This is, this is the vivid. image. So, you know, this is kind of a zoomed-in thing of what they can see. The resolution's about 30 kilometers. And, and this whole thing, from, so that's Texas. 
Yeah, uh, no, so each of these features is each Texas. Each of these is Texas. Yeah, so wow, okay. we're looking at a, an area about 35,000 kilometers across, so about three times the width of the Earth. Right. Uh, and each of these features is about the size of Texas. And, and this is a real live version, if you look on the bottom, taken in December, mm. of what the sun was doing at that time. It's, it's convection, right? It's kind of like gas bubbling, you know, when you put on a pot of water. This is really what the sun is doing. It just sort of feels like it's boiling away. It does, and, but, you know, this is our heat source, and... There's going to be a powerful new telescope because we can actually understand the surface of the sun. You know, we've talked about the probes going near the sun, mm. which is measuring the outside, but because it's so bright, they can't look at the surface, whereas this can. Presumably it needs to be powerful, but does it need to filter out just the pure light? That's right. So it's quite an interesting marvel. They actually bury the light all the way underneath ground to actually filter it, because otherwise it's, you know, you look at it, and we always talk about don't look at the sun, it'll harm your yeah. eyes. A giant mirror essentially turns into a death weapon if you're reflecting four right. meters worth of sunlight. Oh, so if it was on the... If it was at the um, surface and anyone got near it, they'd be... Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of safety precautions. They actually bury the light in the ground and do a series of filtering to actually make it visible, ultimately. So a really powerful vision into our sun. Now, you're also wading into politics this week. The Pence 2024 vision That's right. of the moon, which you sort of indicated a while back might have been a little bit dangerous, yep. possibly. Pushed back, you think, by four years, according to the latest... Um, funding of NASA, basically. That's right. So, so the HR committee, the House of Representatives community, which approves NASA's bill, said, here are recommendations for funding. We don't want 2024. We want 2028, which was a previous timeline, a bit of bouncing forth. Uh, and also less emphasis on the moon. We talked a lot about returning to the moon and establishing there to go to Mars. They're kind of saying, yeah, we need to get to the moon, but let's focus faster on Mars. Uh, and it's becoming quite interesting, and this is exactly what we were worried about, is NASA becoming too politicized, you know, both parties here um, affecting its work. You know, it's hard to say, are you going to work on four-year timeline or eight-year timeline? You know, you can't kind of really mm -hmm. bounce around like this. So we'll, we'll really see what it turns out to be. And finally, Gravity, the movie, didn't quite happen in real life, but that's a good thing. It is, right. So yesterday morning, we were worried that two satellites were about to collide. Uh, and it was within 12 meters of each other, the pass. And, and this is why we worry about it, uh, as we talked about last week with a different satellite exploding. Uh, but as you said, it didn't happen. And that is a good thing in this case, because it could have produced tens of thousands of pieces of debris. Just that, falling down onto Earth. Uh, yeah, orbiting the Earth, and crashing into more things. Normally, if that stuff falls down, they control it. This would have been... The Completely uncontrolled. So, uh, tell us, some big bit of metal could land in my backyard, basically. Yeah, you know, most of it would have burnt in the Earth's atmosphere, but if that big back uh, piece of metal crashes mm -hmm. in another satellite and more of these happen, that's why we... So it didn't happen, but we've still got this space junk issue. That's right, and it's still growing, and it's only a matter of time before another one happens like this, which happened in 2009. And this is the thing, aren't they working on some laser that can pop things... That's right, so, so being built here in Canberra is using a I, laser... I sometimes to, remember this. To, yeah, you do, you're well done. <laughs> it's like we have a chat. Uh, no, um, to actually remove it, because the small bits matter, as you said. Yeah. You don't want stuff to hit, because then it turns into these streams of debris, as we're seeing. We'll let you get back to your uh, home in Canberra. All the best this weekend, Thanks. Brad Tucker. We'll talk next week. Thanks.